Hey guys, my name is Jade Wee and welcome to Dallas Jamming. In this video, I'm going to be making a track from scratch on the Teenage Engineering OP1. So this is my go-to portable synthesizer, even though you can like get a battery pack, you know, for the Machine Plus or the DigiTac, there's really nothing like having a device that is battery powered. And the battery on the OP1 is really something to rave about. I've tried other portable devices and the battery on this is like nothing compares to the battery on this. I stopped using it for months, turned it on and the battery's still like half powered. So definitely worth a mention on the OP1. So my tape is almost full. I have some stuff in here. And I need to make sure that we don't delete anything. I definitely need to export this because I often do that. I'll just delete my tape and it's like, ah, there was golden stuff in there. So I'm going to do a quick run through of the device itself in case you've never seen this before or are you watching this? This is our synth sound, our drum sound, our tape, which is this right here. This is how we pick up pieces of our tape. We put them down, we cut them. If you press shift, you join them. Like they all have different shift functions. Our record button, play, stop, go left, go right, shift. Again, it'll take us to different functions. Um, these are our four parts of the tape. So we have four parts that we can record into. We also have eight memory slots that go with the sound. So like if I'm here, these are all like my presets that I can pick from. Same thing with the drums. These are all our presets. We also have a mixer section over here that controls the four tapes. And then we have specific functions for each one of these buttons. So one is where our loop is gonna start. I can either move just by pressing this, or if I wanna move by bars, I can just press shift and then press that. So I'm gonna do that, one, two, three, four. That's four bars right there. Click out and now I have a loop going. To turn the loop off, I can press three, but I want it on right now, okay? So after that, we have our three effects, our stop, reverse, and then I guess this is kind of like a stop. We'll look at these later. And then we also have two effects that are audio effects that we can set. Then over here, we have our sequencer. We also have different types of sequencers by pressing shift in the sequencer. You can enter the sequencer menu. This is our album. I don't really use this that much. Um, some people include it in their workflow. I don't really use it that much. And if you press shift.com, it'll take you to this menu where you can choose what MIDI channel your OP1 will be on if you want to use it as a MIDI controller or if you want to access what's on the tape via USB. This little button right here enables our microphone if we're going to be recording. We're not going to do that right now. And we have our metronome. And then this little button right here is kind of like a help button. So like it tells you what everything is. So like my synth, my drums, what this does, lift, drop, etc. We also have our little speaker over here, but we're not going to be using that because we have the line out. This tape is so full, I literally have no room to do anything. Okay, one, two, three, four. We can literally only make a four bar loop right now. So that was a quick overview of the Teenage Engineering OP1. Now I'm going to go into the synth sounds and find a dope sound. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, DistroKid. So I'm always thinking of creative ways to let my fans know when I have a new release and DistroKid just made things a whole lot easier with their new promo cards. Just click on more, promo cards, pick one of your releases and DistroKid creates all of these images that you can simply download and share with the world. Pretty dope. Don't forget to use the code below and get 7% off your first year. So the OP1 has a handful of synths. If we press shift and any of our preset numbers, it takes us to like the synth page. So right now I'm on snapshots and this is where all my sounds get saved to. Unfortunately, there's no way to like name the sounds on the OP1. Um, hint, Teenage Engineering, give us that update so we can name our sounds. Um, they're just a bunch of numbers. They don't even have like any order. I don't even know. They probably do, but they're just a bunch of weird numbers. And if you wanna save the names of them, like if you wanna actually edit your names, you have to go into the computer and do that manually. Um, not a big deal, but it would be nice if we could save them on here. So I do have a few sounds saved on here that I need to rename, probably make a pack with them eventually. I have my sequencer on, let me turn it off. Let's see what's on here and we'll pick a cool sound.
like that sound. I normally write in eight bars, but because my tape is full, I'm gonna have to compromise and write in the four bars. So with long sounds like this, it's kind of hard because this is audio, so it is gonna cut. So like I'm gonna show you, it's probably gonna happen, but it is what it is. Um, we'll just use other sounds kind of to mask it. So let's see. Let's make sure our metronome is on and play for a bit and then we'll press record. <laughs> I guess it ended up being three bars, so that's cool. We're going to trim that down to three. So we do get like that little bit of silent space because it was such an elongated pad sound. Is that a word? I don't know. Um, okay, and we're going to go to a different track now and just add something else. I'm so sad that my tape is full because you guys know I love writing like these longer type melodies. Um, so it's gonna be hard just picking what to do with these three bars because it's really just three bars. Um, let me see what's on here. Yeah, that's dope. I wanna keep that. I wanna do something with that. Okay, so three bars it is. Okay, so if you might have noticed, we did get that pop there. We're gonna have to redo that, so I'm going to pick it up. This is how we pick stuff up, and we put that same thing down by pressing down, but we don't really need to put it back down, but that is how you kind of like copy and paste, or like cut and paste. Um, so, but just be careful when you pick stuff up because you can lose a lot of work this way. So when you get that pop at the end of your tracks, it means that the type of sound is just too like decayed or like sustained, and then when that loop stops, like it stops recording. So like one thing that you can do is you can turn the loop off and record that way, and I'll show you what I mean. So now it has that little extra spot at the end. Now I'm going to finish my loop right there, take it out. So we do have a smoother loop there. All right, we're gonna move on to our second track. Maybe we'll add some bass. Another way to sometimes prevent the pop at the end is to try to press stop before the loop hits the end point. So now let's do like a small performance how I would if I was performing this. Oh. 
So you might have noticed that our track got a little crazy when I pressed this button, it kind of got all wobbly and crazy sounding. That was the cow effect sound. So you can set whatever effect you want and the amount of the effect to this button right here, which is kind of like your user performance. You can do it with both of these. Another cool thing about these performance effects is that the more you use them, the better you get at using them. So like at first, you'll probably use this one the most because these don't really fit in with the sequence, like they don't stop where they should. So like for example, let me show you what happens if I press the reverse. <laughs> Like it doesn't really allow me to continue the song in time, it really stops it. This one stops the time, but when you let it go, it's like the time never stops. So the track keeps playing without losing time. And then same thing with this other one, so... Like I really wish that it stopped before that second stop, but it doesn't. So what you do is like, you know, once you get a little better at it, what you have to do is you stop the sequencer and go back to the beginning. So this is how I would use these other two. have to practice it the more that you do it the better that you're gonna get at it like with everything that's it guys i hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to hit that thumbs up subscribe if you want to see more op1 stuff more synthesizer content more life music making adventure yeah you name it hope you're having a great december hope you have a happy holiday and i will catch you in the next one